Gabbard with the mayor's office. I know we gave you information uh, in advance about today's presentation, um, so we'll be ready to dive right in and listen to your presentation, and then we'll ask questions if we have time left. Great. All right. Well, with that, I'll start. Okay. So my name is Lindsay Harris. I am one of the co-executive directors of the Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition. Um, we were founded in 2003, so we're 16 years old. We're a statewide organization, but our headquarters are based in Nashville. And so all of our programs that we um, have, put, have put in this proposal are focused on Davidson County. Just making sure that that was clear, even though we're statewide. So I thought it would make the most sense to explain a little bit about how our organization works, because I think that will help really kind of nest these three programs within the overall context. Um, Sorry, I have to catch my breath um, here and grab some water um, these days. So, the best way to describe the way that our organization works is that we operate on a continuum of escalating engagement. So what we're trying to do on the front end is really meet any immigrant and refugee where they are and help them overcome a barrier. So provide a service that helps them overcome an obstacle they're facing. And then we want to keep them engaged in our work so that down the road they're actually partnering with us to dismantle the barrier. So we're working on a systems change end goal. So the way that that works is we reach about 30,000 people every year um, through a face-to-face -face interaction trying to help them overcome a barrier that they have to immigrant integration. Uh, so in this proposal, the barriers that we talked about were naturalization, participation in the census, and access to legal services for immigration representation. Um, yeah, so overall in Davidson County, there are about 85,000 foreign-born residents. Of those, 23,000 are eligible to naturalize. Um, and then there's about 56,000 or so who are um, not citizens. Of that, 23,000 are eligible to naturalize. There's another 30 who aren't eligible to naturalize. And so that's who we're thinking about with the immigration services. So the overall participation in the census, we're looking in that whole 85,000. Um, for naturalization, we're looking at about the 23,000 who are eligible, and then the remainder is who we're thinking about for those other immigration services. So really, we put together a proposal that seemed like it had several different programs, but our overall goal was to provide um, meaningful supports to all of the immigrants in Davidson County. So yeah, that is sort of the overview. Um, if it's helpful, I can break it down by program, or I can pause there for questions. What would be best? Just keep on going. Whatever mm -hmm. makes the most sense for okay. you makes works for you. Mm -hmm. Great. So I will talk to you for a second about each of those three. So in naturalization, um, of the 23,000, we want to educate as many of them as possible, um, but we can really only guarantee reaching about 3,500 face-to-face. Uh, and we think that, again, what we're trying to do is get as much information out there broadly as possible. And then for people who need a little bit more assistance, we want to provide an increased level of support. So under naturalization, that will be about 130 individuals that we can support with um, actual completing of that application. But our goal is to reach at least 3,500 of them face to face to talk to them about the importance again. Whatever that small barrier is, we want to help them overcome it. For people who have a bigger barrier, we can assist at least 130 of them. Um, and so that, you would help 130 people become citizens? Yes. Okay, but you would educate 3,500? Yes, at least 3,500. Mm -hmm. um, again, the goal is to put information to those 30, or excuse me, 2,300 <clears throat> or 23,000 who are eligible, um, but have a face-to-face -face interaction with 3,500. Yeah, so educate as many as we can, face-to-face -face interaction with 3,500, and then 130 would get interaction with an attorney to complete the paperwork. Uh, this is important because it helps people um, increase their income level, increase home ownership. That's putting more um, sort of tax revenues and support out there in the economy. They're less likely to be unemployed and rely on other government services, which is important. Um, it also increases the 
hiring pool for the metro government because it allows people to apply for public sector jobs uh, and then of course they're eligible for a U.S. passport and um, they wouldn't be reliant on the third category of immigration legal services any longer. So yeah, that is our naturalization goal. Uh, and then we have a census goal uh, where we know the census is coming up in 2020. We've already started working on that. Um, trends are showing that immigrant communities are participating less and less in the census every year. That is detrimental because it will reduce um, the accuracy of the count for funding opportunities for identification of low income areas and it also just doesn't give us good data to work with. So um, our goal is to, again, um, we worked on this in 2010. It's been 10 years since we've worked on it. So um, we will wait and kind of see how the program takes shape. But what we want to do is hire two full-time staff focused on ensuring that the immigrant community is part of the complete count, that we get accurate numbers um, through, again, broad outreach. And then we're still trying to figure out what that more specific um, one-to-one -one support is gonna look like. If people need access to technology, coaching, just support and sort of building confidence in the system. We're still trying to figure that out right now. But um, yeah, we have a robust program and we want to be ready to jump in um, and build people's confidence so that when next spring rolls around, they're ready to engage. And then the third project that we have is um, helping the immigrant community access resources um, and really have access to sort of justice in a way that they may not currently um, understand the immigration system. They may not currently understand applicable laws or how to find good support um, when it comes to getting information or if they have an interaction with immigration or law enforcement, uh, seeing people not know where to turn. So as much as possible, we want to provide proactive information. Again, reaching 8,000 face-to-face with information about immigration laws and how to access um, legal support in the event they need it. And then, um, let's see, we go into a little bit of detail, but then providing additional intensive support for people who need it. So people who actually need help filling out paperwork, putting plans in place, contacting attorneys who really need um, a more concentrated level of support are also included. So with all of these, going very broad, trying to reach as many people as possible with information about the service, encourage them to participate, and then through that increasing escalation, we want to invite them to, um, yeah, get more uh, support from our organization for those who need it to overcome additional barriers. So those are the three uh, programs that we have put together under this proposal. What's your annual operating budget? Our annual operating budget is going to be 1.8 million this year. Got a generic question. What makes TARC special? <laughs> that is a wonderful question. So we are um, one of the only multi-ethnic organizations. I think that's really important. Our services aren't geared to one specific community. We want to partner with all of the different immigrant communities in call Tennessee and Nashville home. Um, and as such, we have an incredibly diverse staff and board. We have about 17 different um, ethnicity is represented between our staff and board, so we're really trying to um, take seriously the need to support all of the communities who call Tennessee home and have an organization that represents them. Uh, and then the other thing I think is special is that we're not, um, services are incredibly important, but they're one piece of the puzzle. And so we want to make sure that we're not only providing services, like we said, um, that overcoming barriers on the front end, but we actually want to partner with people to think about systems change. Um, and so we invite them to engage with us in the long term to help remove some of those barriers to integration, figure out how people can more easily um, access opportunities like naturalization and what um, policy changes or systems changes would better, would more better facilitate that for them. Um, so yeah, we're not just trying to get out there and meet the need today, but we're trying to look down the road and see how we alleviate um, struggles like that in the future, how we can sort of put it in, yeah, a new process that would help people. So more. then what does success look like? 
In which area? Just as an organization? As an organization. You know, what is a, out, what is a, a favorable outcome to you? Yeah, it is, it's hard to sort of measure with um, opportunities like that. Um, but I think for us, we are looking at um, success is sort of in some ways number served, right? We have those same metrics that everyone else mm -hmm. has. How many people we actually reach with the program? How many people actually become citizens and actually participate in the census? Uh, but what we're working at at the long term is um, success for us is leadership development. It is more immigrants and refugees participating in the civic process as engaged citizens um, who are really working side by side with us to help create systems that don't introduce barriers, but they help produce barriers to integration. Okay. Is TARC providing any direct legal representation to immigrants? So we are in the process of bringing an attorney on staff, um, but as a part of this proposal, we are not proposing that our organization directly represent anyone in any type of proceedings. Um, the only place where they would have the direct interaction with an attorney is through our immigration workshops. Like we talked about naturalization, they get paired with a volunteer attorney, um, and that's overseen by an immigration attorney. And then they, um, in the access to justice, would either get referred to a attorney who would work on their case or again in those workshops they would be matched up with an attorney um, who would advise them and then they have the opportunity to have a longer-term relationship with the attorney but our organization ourself is not at this point um, offering legal representation through this do you all have staff dedicated to the resource referral system and also do you do any follow-up with the 5,000 requests um, that you all end up passing on? Yeah, so we do. We have one full-time staffer on it right now, one part-time staffer on it right now, and four attorneys. Um, and so our the requests that we're getting for that type of support are doubling every year over year. Um, people are increasingly needing more support, and so that has grown rapidly. Um, we do strive to follow up as best we can. Um, this is a high volume mm -hmm. <laughs> of people to be able to do that. Um, but a lot of those requests come in via, um, interestingly, email, text message, social media is where a lot of the community feels most comfortable approaching us. So um, we circle back uh, as best we can, especially when it's in written form. It can be easier to, to send a follow-up message to someone, especially to make sure that their voicemail was returned. Mm -hmm. And whoever they tried to put in contact with, whether that actually met their need or not. We don't want to just be. And who are your biggest referral partners? Uh, those are great questions. So we do make referrals to quite a few metro agencies. Um, we work a lot with metro social services, um, sometimes the domestic violence division. Um, and so we have a good list of who to call um, within Metro a lot of times who can be supportive. The list is about 200 people long in terms of who we're making mm -hmm. referrals to. Um, we do have quite a few partners that are private um, attorneys who either volunteer or take um, take cases uh, that we send to them uh, pro bono or um, sometimes at cost depending on the case. Um, yeah, I would say those are some of our largest referrals, but we also have, again, partnerships with Metro schools, universities, yeah. Wide, wide variety of questions there. Good. Thank, Thank you very so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your time this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us.